Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. This is the first of two short podcasts where we introduce the idea of cost, volume, profit analysis. Our first part will introduce fixed and variable costs and some methods of estimating these. Variable costs are those costs that are going to change with the level of activity. For a furniture manufacturer, the more furniture that is made, the greater the amount of raw material that will be required. So raw material would be a variable cost. A shipping company transporting goods uses fuel oil. And the further the cargo is to be shipped, the more fuel oil will be used. So for this case, the fuel oil becomes a variable cost. In the same way, feed costs on a beef farm would increase with the number of cattle being kept. Raw materials are a direct cost, whilst fuel oil is an indirect cost. So variables can be direct or indirect costs. An important point about variable costs is that the cost per unit will stay the same regardless of the number of units produced. Fixed costs are those costs that will not change with the level of activity. For a small factory, these might include the rent payable on the premises, since this will remain the same regardless of the number of units produced. As the number of units produced increases, then the fixed cost per unit will decrease. For variable costs, a graph of costs against units of production will produce the line shown where the slope remains the same and gives the unit cost. For fixed costs, the line is parallel to the horizontal axis, showing fixed costs remain the same regardless of output. Although the fixed costs may remain the same, it means that the more units that are produced, then the more units that share the fixed costs. If fixed costs are $100,000 and shared between 10,000 units, then the cost per unit is $10. If production increases to 25,000 units, this falls to $4, and at 50,000 units the cost is only $2 per unit. Fixed costs may be grouped as committed or discretionary. The rent on premises has to be paid, regardless of whether any production is taking place so this would be considered a committed cost. In contrast, although the cost of advertising is often fixed at a level for the period, it could be changed at short notice. This means it can be considered a discretionary cost. Discretionary costs, which include such things as money for research and development, can be cut if needed. However, this can have consequences. If advertising is cut, then sales may fall. And if no money goes into research and development, then a business may not be able to keep up with competitors. It is not always possible to allocate costs as either variable or fixed. There are some costs that will have a component from each, and these are called mixed costs. An example of mixed costs might well be the costs associated with making sales, where each salesperson is on a base salary and then on commission. The base salary is the fixed component. The commission is the variable component. The total production cost is equal to the fixed cost plus the variable cost for the number of units produced. This is shown in the graph. There are situations where fixed costs may alter. If space becomes a limiting factor in production, then there will be a point where fixed costs will suddenly increase by the need to rent more space. If capacity is determined by machine availability, then exceeding the capacity will mean purchase of additional machines. This will give rise to additional fixed costs in terms of depreciation and maintenance. There will also be additional costs with more labour being required for the additional machine. Where fixed costs alter in this way, they are termed stepped costs, because they will increase by a single amount and then remain fixed until another increase is required. Consider a worked example for solely yours, a manufacturer of shoes. The figures show costs for materials, labour, utilities and depreciation, and give the number of pairs of shoes produced. 
The first step is to determine which of these are to be considered as fixed costs and which are to be considered as variable costs. The decision of the manager is to determine that materials and labour are to be treated as variable costs whilst utilities and depreciation will be considered as fixed costs. From this, fixed and variable costs can now be determined. There is a total of $170,000 for variable costs that are shared between 20,000 pairs of shoes. The variable cost for each pair of shoes will be $8.50. The sum of the fixed costs will be $30,000. Managers can now use this information to estimate costs. Suppose that the firm estimates that a total of 30,000 pairs of shoes will be produced during the next period. What will be the estimate for production costs? The variable costs will be $8.50 times 30,000, giving a total of $255,000. Fixed costs will be $30,000, giving a total production cost of $285,000. Solely yours has the figures for production from the previous year, and these can also be used to estimate production costs. The production costs from the previous year can be used to plot a scatter graph. The best straight line can then be drawn through these points. Using the scatter graph we can estimate production costs for 15,000 units. Using this graph, the estimate is for production costs of $155,000. A third method to estimate costs is to use a high-low method. The estimate for unit costs is now based on the change in cost and the change in level of activity. The highlighted area shows the figures that we will use for the calculation. Dividing the change in cost by the change in level of activity gives a unit cost of $8.99. Managers may look at all three methods of determining the estimated cost. In this case, to produce 15,000 pairs of shoes, the estimates vary between $155,000 and almost $165,000. The actual difference between the lowest and highest estimates is $9,850. Whilst estimates are fine for a typical produ production run, the estimates may not be accurate if the volume of activity is greatly reduced or greatly increased. Fixed and variable costs are usually only to be considered as reliable within a particular range, called the relevant range. For production outside this range, the estimates may not be accurate. The relevant range here has been highlighted. Outside this range, it is clear that estimates would not be reliable. This ends our first podcast on cost volume profit analysis, brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Park Bench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.